they have a digital platform where they qualify buyers, large companies, Carrefour, Nestle, Pepsi, Coke, whoever, on their platform, and they will, at one half of 1%, discounted factoring invoices for the entire supply chain, anyone in the supply chain of those buyers. This is phenomenal. They do 50 million transactions each day, every single day, for over 500,000 suppliers in the countries they work with. Where do they work? They work in the developed markets. Where do I want them to work? Here in Egypt. We're talking to them about putting the platform here in Egypt, getting buyers registered on the platform through their own due diligence, every invoice issued to any of their suppliers through agriculture, through retailers, big box retailers, whoever, can have financing you know, um, made available instead of 30, 60, 90 days tomorrow, like that. That is phenomenal because you're injecting liquidity into the marketplace, and right now we're starving the marketplace, right? It's like not having enough oxygen and not enough gas in your engine. So the spark plug is at catalytic capital. You need to get enough investment going in, enough oxygen and liquidity in the marketplace so your engine of the economy starts running. So that's what this slide is all about. It's leverage. So aid is changing its business model. One of the partners is saying, what does Samantha Power say, the administrator in Washington? Private sector-led development. Not just in economic areas, in all areas, in education, in healthcare, in productive sectors, everywhere in the economy. And then the other thing she's talking about is localization. How do we work with local actors? And one of the most important local actors is everyone here in the room, and it's also the companies, the micro, small, medium enterprises that are the guts of the economy. 98, 99% of this economy and any economy in the world is made up of micro, small, and medium enterprises, right? I think we all know that, but that's where we have to see where we're gonna get the results. So this slide here talks about how we can get co-investors to invest in local firms to generate long-term impact, right? We're trying to get them to invest into investable projects that are really gonna generate results for micro, small, medium, the entire supply chain and across the economy. So you'll see the box in the middle is the dynamism of the economy. Investment goes to reinvestment, goes to capitalizing and recapitalizing, just like that company I mentioned out of the US. They can do 50 million transactions a day. That's what you need in an economy. It's like magic. You know, There's no one conducting the economy like an or orchestra conductor. It happens because the prices are working, the legislation is working, the system is working, and you get the investment and the dynamism going on in the economy. So the key is local firms for that localization in key sectors and regions that maybe you can't reach on a purely commercial basis. So we can de-risk investors to go into those sectors of the economy or regions that we want to reach, government, and the private sector and philanthropies. We want to reach new areas. The other thing that was mentioned earlier is climate. Climate is existential for us. This is not just a woke liberal agenda. It is critical for businesses to operate more efficiently, sustainably, and sustainability, by the way, is profit. First, if they don't make a profit, they're, not, they're gonna go out of business. Second is people. They have to look after people, their own employees, their con consumers, their communities that they operate in. And the third is planet. That's the environment they operate in. If we all don't take responsibility for preserving the environment that we are living in, investing in, and educating our children in for their future, there's no future for them. So this is not just a nice thing to talk about or a nice thing to have. It's critical that we target sectors of the economy where we're really going to bring about the reduction in carbon and greenhouse effects that is really eroding the viability of our planet to live on. So business, self-enlightened business, knows this, and they are bringing in business models, fintech, agritech, edtech. We heard examples last week. The Africa Venture Capital Association was in the Four Seasons Hotel. We have three of our partners, impact investors, venture capital investors from West Africa were there. 
We went and met with them, talk about, hey, are you guys interested in investing here in Egypt? Absolutely. And they told us about new education technology that they are seeing in the marketplace here that they want to invest in. Agricultural technology that they want to invest in because it's a game changer in terms of getting the productivity, the return on investment, the yields that they're aspiring to get. So the purpose you heard earlier from our former premiers in this country who know very well that competitiveness is absolutely crucial. Competitiveness is at the enterprise level, it's at the sector level, it's at the national level. And Critical to competitiveness is education of our youth. They are our workers. We want them to know how to think, how to think abstractly, how to pro solve problems. So education and technology, how many people in the crowd are economists? I study economics and business. What are the two things that shift the growth curve? Technology and education. You want to really shift your performance in the economy? Those are the two, two th things we have to hit. And that's what this allows us to hit. We have to get scale. We have to get investments that are going to reach and achieve greater capacity in our supply chains, all the way up and down the supply chains. We need to get bigger fleets, new products. We need to improve competitiveness, which we just talked about, at micro levels and across the entire economy. We need to accelerate investments that might take two or three or five years to happen. We need it now or in six months or in 12 months, not in three years or five years or 10 years. So acceleration is a key part of blended financing. And I mentioned geographic reach going into regions that is, are completely left out of the economy. That's where our youth, our communities are left behind. They're not involved. We can reach them by de-risking investment into those sectors in agriculture, in uh, extending internet access. Microsoft announced at the US Africa Business Summit last July the um, Brad Smith, the vice chairman, said, Microsoft is committed to increasing 100 million people to get on the internet with content in the next two years. So that's part of their core business. That is enlightened self-interest. Why are they doing it? Because their business model is about how, how, how do people be on the internet, benefit from the internet, and of course buy products and services that they provide. But this is where business has to be part of the solution working with government, working with philanthropies to find out these solutions. The final thing on this slide is eventuality, which means that, you know, eventually that uh, new factory might happen or this investment might happen, but if you have to go through all the, you know, uh, hurdles of legislation, all the requirements or feasibility studies, studies, it can take too long. And so blended finance can accelerate that process where we can take catalytic capital and work with debt and equity financiers on specific projects to bring in processing that maybe never existed here in particular commodities in Egypt that will increase value addition and increase jobs and employment and profitability for companies.